Hi, everyone. We're looking at our chapter six semester review and chapter six was all about polygons and quadrilaterals. Uh, so just to kind of remind uh, remind you guys from polygons, we talked about the sum of the interior angles of any polygon was 180 times n minus two. And remember, this is a the n stands for number of sides. We spent a lot of time working with quadrilaterals. And specifically, a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. And for any kind of quadrilateral, because we work so much with it, we need to remember that a quadrilateral has a total interior of 360 degrees. So let's revisit some of our uh, quadrilaterals that we worked with. So we first worked with the parallelogram. We said that opposite sides were parallel, so they have to have those parallel markings, which means that they will have the same slope for when we graph these. They also have to be congruent, which means they are going to have the same um, length. We talked about opposite angles. We're also going to be congruent. So our two acute angles will have to have the same measure and the two obtuse angles will have to have the same measure. We talked about consecutive angles have to be supplementary, meaning they're going to make 180. And again, that just means they're on the same side. And then we talked about the diagonals are going to bisect each other, which means when they are connected, that point in the middle splits them into equal parts. And so that was pretty much everything we looked at with parallelograms. <clears throat> the parallelograms could go down into smaller families. Uh, the rectangle was all properties of the parallelogram. So I'm not going to redraw everything from the parallelogram picture, but we are going to look at some more specific pieces. They're going to have four right angles, meaning four 90 degree angles at each corner. And the diagonals this time are congruent. So when we connect them, all four of these pieces are identical. Next after rectangle, we looked at another family group of parallelograms, the rhombus. And again, it's got all properties of parallelogram, so I'm not going to redraw all of those parallelogram properties. This time it's got four congruent sides. So all four sides are exactly the same. Our diagonals are perpendicular. Remember perpendicular means make 90. That's the upside down T shape. So we get four 90s in the middle. And then those diagonals bisect opposite angles. So at each of these corners, we get congruent little pieces. Because remember, this came from parallelogram, which said the opposite angles are congruent. So now they're congruent, and now they get cut into equal parts. When we take everything from the parallelogram, rectangle, and rhombus, that's when we get the square. So it is both a rectangle and a rhombus. But it's also, again, because it's a rectangle and the rhombus, it's also parallelogram properties are going to work here as well. So just some major properties that we need to remember here, again, from the rhombus. I'm not going to redraw everything from the parallelogram, but I will draw some of it. From the rhombus, all four sides are the same. From the rectangle, all four angles are 90. The diagonals will make 90 in the middle. They are perpendicular. And those diagonals will bisect each of those 45, each of those 90 degree angles in the corners. 
and split it equally into two 45s. So each corner has two 45 degree angles. So all four of these little triangles that we just made are all identical. So if I know what's going on in one part here, I can figure out the rest. Now, that was all of our parallelogram properties that we looked at, all of our parallelogram figures. Our next group of, thing, of quadrilaterals that we looked at uh, are, are the trapezoids. And this has two pair of parallel sides, which are the bases. So find the sides that are going the same direction. Those are the bases. Con so consecutive interior angles for this one will be supplementary, meaning when they're on the same leg, they will be supplementary. The non-parallel sides are going to be your legs. And so when they're on the same leg, that is, that is the one that are uh, supplementary. Now, one special property here. If the trapezoid is isosceles, it will have congruent legs. and also congruent diagonals. All right, and then we looked at the kite. So with our kite, we have consecutive congruent sides, two pairs of those. So our two shorter sides will be congruent, our two longer sides will be congruent. So they're no longer across from each other. They are next to each other connected. Our diagonals are perpendicular. So I get four 90s in the middle there. Once I have one set of opposite angles are congruent. Those are the non-vertex angles. Those are congruent. <clears throat> and one extra property. The vertex angles are bisected by the diagonal. So those little pieces of angles there are bisected. Now, there's one extra thing that we looked at, actually going back to your trapezoid, we had a formula there, which dealt with mid-segment of a trapezoid. The mid segment formula yeah. okay your mid segment was the line in the trapezoid or the segment that connected the midpoint of the legs and so we had a formula to find that which said that mid-segment was equal to base one plus base two divided by two. And again, it doesn't matter which base is which, you get the same answer either way. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed learning a little, uh, refreshing your mind a little bit about um, our quadrilateral properties. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Bye, guys.